During World War II, both the Soviet Navy and the United States Naval Forces encountered various threats. As the war came to an end, the Cold War began. Both nations, leveraging the knowledge gained during World War II, began developing advanced technologies to enhance their naval capabilities. Among the various threats, the greatest concern for both nations was nuclear submarines. The U.S. submarines were getting quieter, stealthier, and stronger. They were equipped not only with nuclear missiles capable of devastating an entire nation, but also with lethal torpedoes capable of destroying both nuclear submarines and surface ships. In response to this threat, the Soviet Union recognized the need for a simple yet effective weapon system to counter these underwater challenges. Consequently, the RBU-6000 anti-submarine rocket system was developed and introduced into the Soviet Navy. This system can launch depth charges to hunt down submarines and deploy decoys to evade incoming torpedoes. In this video, with the help of 3D animation, we'll take a look at how the RBU-6000 anti-submarine rocket system works in detail. First, we will examine all the components of this system. Next, we'll explore the different types of depth charges and decoys it fires, how they function, and how they are stored. After that, we'll take a look at the fascinating mechanism used to load the rockets into the launch tubes and how they are fired. Finally, we will discuss how the depth charges and decoys work to destroy submarines and effectively counter incoming torpedoes. So without further ado, let's begin. The first variant of the RBU series of rocket launchers was the RBU-2500. Developed in the 1950s, it featured 16 launch tubes, eight arranged in a row. The designation 2500 refers to the approximate range of the rockets. A later model, the RBU-1200, was designed with five launch tubes and is the smallest of all the models. Then came the RBU-6000. Nicknamed Smirch 2, this 212 mm caliber rocket launcher has 12 launch tubes. Weighing around 6,834 pounds, it is 2 meters long, 2.25 meters tall, and 1.75 meters wide. The system includes a base mounted on the ship's deck with a small door for loading depth charges into the launch tubes. A pedestal is fixed to the base, and the midsection rests on the pedestal. This midsection contains the essential electronics required to rotate the launch tubes and it can rotate along the vertical axis. It has a traverse of 180 degrees to the left and 180 degrees to the right, with a traverse rate of 30 degrees per second. A horseshoe-shaped body is attached to the midsection and it can carry 12 launch tubes. The front of the launch tubes consists of brackets and plug connectors for loading and firing preparation of the depth charges. The brackets are mainly used to set the depth of the fuse used in the depth charges, and they hold the depth charges inside the launch tubes while firing. The rear end of the launch tubes consists of electronic igniters that ignite the solid rocket motor inside the depth charges. This entire section has an elevation angle ranging from positive 60 degrees to negative 15 degrees, with 20 degrees pitch stabilization and 7 degrees roll stabilization. The RBU-6000 can fire depth charges and anti-torpedo decoys. The RGB-60 and the 90R are the depth charges, whereas the Magnuset MN is an anti-torpedo decoy. The RGB-60 is an unguided depth charge. It is 1.87 meters long, weighs 263.4 pounds, and has a diameter of 212 millimeters. In the front, it has the UDV-60 fuse, which can be programmed to detonate the depth charge at a predetermined depth. This fuse also functions as an impact fuse, meaning it can activate upon impact. Behind the fuse, there is an explosive charge, and it weighs 51.8 pounds. At the rear, a solid rocket motor is placed. To load the depth charges, the launch tubes are rotated 90 degrees downward. Beneath the ship's deck, you will find the conveyor magazines. 
This is where the depth charges are stored. Around 72 to 96 rounds can be stored here. A simple rotary mechanism is used to move the conveyor magazine. A hoist mechanism is used to load the rounds into the launch tubes. Now let's examine the loading mechanism more closely. First, the launch tube that needs to be loaded is aligned with the door on the base. When the door opens, it activates the bracket mechanism on the launch tube. The hoist mechanism then pushes the round into the launch tube. When the hoist goes down, the door closes, and on the way down, it closes the bracket mechanism as well. Let's take a look at the complete mechanism. To load the next round, the adjacent launch tube is aligned with the door. Then the conveyor is moved to align the round with the door, and the loading mechanism repeats. If you are enjoying this video, subscribe to SYG Design Works for more advanced animations, and click on the bell icon to get notified when we upload a new video. The RBU-6000 uses the Buria fire control system to fire the rockets. The ship's sonar is used to detect underwater threats. Sonar is used to determine the depth, speed, and location of submarines. When the submarine is detected, the data from the sonar is used to determine the required elevation and traverse angles for the RBU-6000 system to aim at the target. Once it is aimed and the fuse is set, the rockets are fired. When the rockets leave the launch tubes, they push the bracket mechanism open. With a range of 300 meters to 3.6 miles, they can reach speeds up to 400 meters per second. When they hit the water, they sink at a rate of 11.6 meters per second, and they can effectively hit targets at depths of 10 meters to 500 meters underwater. When the rockets reach the predetermined depth, or when they come in contact with the submarine, they explode, causing severe damage to the submarine. The 9DR is an actively guided depth charge, meaning it can guide itself towards the target without any help from external sources. It is used to take out submarines and torpedoes. It weighs 248 pounds, is 1.83 meters long, and has a diameter of 212 millimeters. If the RBU-6000 system is upgraded to fire this depth charge, then this entire system is called the RPK-8 system. The 90R consists of a warhead module that separates from the body. This module is called 90SG. The warhead module consists of a hydroacoustic sensor that detects sounds emitted by submarines and torpedoes. The fuse is a contact type, as well as a programmable depth level fuse. Like anti-tank missiles, this module has a shaped charge, which is nothing but a copper cone, surrounded by an explosive charge. Behind that is the control section that collects data from the hydroacoustic sensor to move the control fins to guide the module towards the target. The midsection consists of a solid rocket motor, and the rear section has six deployable fins. When the 90 air rockets are fired, the fins are deployed to enhance stability in the air and water. Upon hitting the water, the warhead module separates from the rocket. This module has stabilizers that help it maintain a straight course underwater. The control fins are used to steer the module toward the target. Flying at speeds up to 350 meters per second, it has a range of 600 meters to 2.6 miles. It has a depth range of 10 meters to 1,000 meters in anti-submarine mode and 4 meters to 10 meters in anti-torpedo mode, with the warhead module sinking at a rate of 11.6 meters per second. As the module approaches the target, the fuse detonates the explosive charge. The copper cone inside the charge collapses and shoots out in the form of a high-speed jet, which is capable of destroying the submarine's double-hull structure. 
The Magnusit MN is an anti-torpedo device that can be launched from the RPK-8 system. Weighing 253.5 pounds, it has a range of 2.67 miles and can operate in two modes, as a jammer or a decoy. It also has deployable fins and a jammer or decoy module that separates from the body. When a submarine launches a torpedo towards a surface ship, the torpedo moves towards the target with the help of the onboard guidance system. When the module is in the jammer mode, it sinks to a depth of 25 meters and emits the jamming signal. When a torpedo enters the jamming range, the jamming signal interferes with its guidance system, preventing it from reaching its target. To prevent this, American engineers came up with a brilliant idea. This is the Mark 48 torpedo of the U.S. Navy, commonly used in nuclear submarines such as the Ohio-class submarines. At the rear end of this torpedo, there's a wire spool that can hold around 16-mile-long fiber optic wire. When this torpedo is launched, it is guided towards the target using a fiber optic cable, making it resistant to jamming. When the torpedo gets closer to its target, the wire is cut off and the onboard guidance system takes over. To address this threat, engineers in the Soviet Union devised a brilliant solution. When the module is acting as a decoy, a buoyancy bag is inflated, which keeps the module floating on the water surface. The decoy simulates the acoustic signature, or the sound of the ship's propellers, to create a false target for the torpedo. The torpedo will attack the false target instead of the real one, while the ship moves to a safer location. The RBU-6000 depth charges not only damage submarines, they can also snap the wire guidance of the torpedoes, kill frogmen, cut harbor nets and chains, destroy unmanned underwater vehicles, cripple transducers used in the torpedoes, and destroy magnetic mines. This system is the last line of defense for the surface vessels against underwater threats. Although the RBU-6000 was designed in the 1950s, it is still used extensively on numerous surface vessels such as the frigates, corvettes, destroyers, cruisers, and carriers of the Russian, Ukrainian, and Indian naval forces. With the modern depth charge, the 90R1, which has an extended range and a non-contact proximity fuse, this system is just getting smarter and lethal. And that is how the RBU-6000 anti-submarine rocket system works. Thank you for watching.